Hello and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Modelcraft bench with another quick look review of this, the brand spanking new Armour Hobby 48 scale Hurricane 2C. This one is something I've been waiting for ever since it was announced, the Hurricane 2C. It's my favourite mark of the Hurricane. Uh, all my favourite schemes on the Hurricane are on this mark and there's only really one other kit that's worth talking about of this type of hurricane in this scale and that's the old Hasegawa kit which despite its age is actually it's decent it has some construction niggles it's expensive it's incredibly hard to find but just like all of those things it's it's a worthy kit still but this is a long overdue brand new look at the thing new new tool new technologies and all the rest of it and Knowing Armour 70 second stuff as I have come to, I think it could be quite good. I also have, not for this video, it'll be a separate video by itself, but I've also got this. It's another one um, that I've been wanting to pick up uh, because I absolutely love this scheme on the uh, P39. Absolutely love it. I did build a similar scheme in 48 using the Edward kit. Um, which is a perfectly reasonable kit but it, again it's <laughs> a bit of a tricky one but anyway irrelevant it's a different scale but I don't yet have the Wildcat obviously didn't have the newly released P39 so this set seemed like the obvious choice so this will be the subject of a separate review at some point soon anyway let's get on with the one we want to see shall we so I've just returned from a week at uh, Riyadh volunteering I work there as a minibus driver aircrew transport and I do get to have a couple of hours here and there wandering around the showground and visiting traders, uh, one of whom this year was Andy Hills with Antics and he posted on Facebook that he'd got some of these so I made it my business to get over there and pick one up for review as soon as possible. So here it is. Thanks to Andy for that, he put one aside for me. But now, a new development, still got a thin a thin card end opening box but we now have an ICM style sturdy tray box inside well done on the hobby they obviously heard me moaning about end opening boxes and decided to sort it out <laughs> inside then packet of parts destructions was inside so I'll leave those in there for the minute that to one side and let's have the Genesis does ASMR section and get this bag open and see what we've got there's a spare bit of stretch sprue here anybody who struggles with stretch sprue you get some with it right One, two, three sprues, a spare sprue stub transparencies. So let's start with the wings since they're right there. So full span upper and lower, standard armor hobby, I, I guess, really. Uh, all their 172nd kits are done like this, or the more recent ones anyway. And I think it's a grand idea because it allows. A proper setting of dihedral and also the, the extra strength given by this being linked is not inconsiderable um, probably really doesn't matter in 72nd truthfully but in the larger scales it, it can make quite a difference to the way a completed model feels um, two lots of cannon stubs have got slightly different um, spring details this one is further out than this one they're okay they're not they're not super amazing but they're okay but these wing panels my goodness me the surface detail on these is staggering absolutely outstanding you have all of the sorts of fasteners here so listen raised riveting these outboard panels 
raised fasteners around these removable panels in the root area. Recessed looking detail for the quick turn fasteners on these cannon panels but raised detail for the fasteners on these. Recessed rivets towards the front of the wing and along the leading edge. I am not a hurricane spurt so I don't know if that's correct but I would assume so. Beautiful fabric representation here on the aileron. Absolutely delicious. Softly raised ribs, no stupid rib tape details. Really beautifully done. And then the lower part is the same deal. A mixture of raised and recessed rivet detail. Obviously the recessed is there to represent flush riveting. Raised strengthening straps, raised fasteners everywhere. The flaps have got rounded leading edges. It's just stunning. I'm going to bring it up closer and I hope I'm going to just actually move the light up a little now that the box has gone. I hope this comes through on the video because it is just glorious. On the inside lots of little sort of riblets everywhere presumably to aid with stiffening a little. The Armour Hobby plastic hinges are present and correct all over the place, you can see them all, which is these plastic circles they do around their ejector pins, presumably for some sort of efficiency gain, I don't know, but <laughs> it's kind of comical. None of these look like they're going to impinge on the fit at all. But it's very very easy to snap though to snip those pins off if you feel the need. There is one glaring flaw. I don't know if anyone else has picked up on it yet, but these pointed trailing edges on both sides of this wing part. This is uh this is obviously moulded in to prevent this, but as you can see, it's been pushed up and it's snapped. But both of these trailing edges are significantly damaged. With care that can be straightened out and hopefully won't result in any losses but there is the potential for that to snap away. Let's get that out of the way uh, and require some attention with some filler. So that's a little unfortunate. But in every other way these are truly Absolutely stunning. Some of the nicest injection moulded plastic I've seen yet from anyone in terms of surface detail. Absolutely stunning. Pop that there. And next up, we will look at this one. This is Sprue B, according to the little data plate there. This one was Sprue C, the wings were C. Okay, so. What we've got here, a few slouch halves, propeller, drop tanks, radiator stuff, belly, you've got a tropical intake here. These might be cannon pods for a 2D perhaps, that's how I'm not a hurricane spirit. And some bombs, exhaust stubs also, these are not hollowed out. They are the aggressively ejected version. So again, the radiator path has got raised fastenings on it. But clearly the side parts where it's vertical in the mould, there's not much going on there. And in fact, the scribed line on that's a little indistinct. We've got two spinners. One is slightly more pointy than the other. And then the fuselage halves themselves. Again, raised rivets. Beautiful, beautiful. Zeus fastener detail. Again, some of the nicest I've seen in any scale, actually. Absolutely lovely. Uh, and lovely fabric again. It's not overdone. It's. I feel sometimes like what like manufacturers feel like they need to overstate the, the fabric effects to prove that they're there or something. But this, this is just beautiful. And again, well. Up closer to allow you to actually see that. Look at those fasteners around the nose, it's, it's gorgeous. Inside, 
nothing much a few locations plastic hinges all over the place and you can see this belly plate molded separately so you know expect to see hurricane at some point but not only that this is actually quite a sensible way to mold to break the fuselage down with regard to making it a little easier to not damage these very very subtle fabric effects that this has really lovely stuff <clears throat> and then we have sprue A and this has got everything else on it so we have another under fuselage insert here difference being it's not going to be easy to show but you might be able to see but this one has the angled forward cut out in the tail wheel area this one has the vertical cut out so you have a tail plane again one piece upper and lower so we shouldn't have any issues with droopy tail planes you've got some wheel well details here and here tail wheel there <clears throat> obviously a fin and rudder and then most of the rest of it is taken up with cockpit parts we've got slightly different sort of exhaust stub here so the other ones are the sort of the fish tail type and these are the more circular exit pipe style elevators again molded in one undercarriage doors with raised rivet detail on them again do have a bit of rib tapage going on on these not sure why they've done it on these but not on anything else uh, spar for the undercarriage bay and we've got wheels here which are molded in halves and they've got Dunlop written on them and some tyre size information all these little pieces are just so beautifully molded lots and lots of detail with without ending up with a staggering amount of parts and I'm, I'm quite a fan of that I don't mind every now and again building a model that's got a lot of parts I quite enjoy you know cleaning up parts and putting parts together obviously I'm a modeler that's half of what it's about but it can get tiring as well and it's nice sometimes when things are just molded in one and you you, you can just play with painting them and, and getting things together and it just saves a lot of time but it, but it is it, this is truly truly lovely absolutely everywhere you look there's a couple of very small bits of flash here and there but mostly they're coming in areas where it's not going to be required to clean up it's off the edge of the sprue rather than off the parts and obviously that doesn't matter even the inside of the undercarriage door has raised rivet for, uh, detail on it and they've somehow managed to have that detailed both sides without any ejector pin marks in it anywhere so let's give you some close-ups so undercarriage door internally flip it over it's a spar for the wheel well wing spar detail the wheels And an absolutely lovely, I'll put it the right way up, instrument panel. It's just, it's just glorious, absolutely glorious. Every bit as good as I expected it would be. And if that smacks of bias, then so be it. It even includes the uh, um, glare, glare shields for the exhaust for the, for the night fighter variant night intruder, night attack, whatever you want to call it absolutely stunning stuff then the other part we have here some transparencies an open canopy, a closed canopy landing light covers navigation lights for the wings and gun sight lens and a rear view mirror And again, in true armour style, they're absolutely delightful. Very, very subtle frame detail, which is nice. But not so subtle that it's going to be difficult to mask it. Excellent clarity. 
with excellent polishing, there's not really any marks in those. Absolutely lovely. So then, on to the instructions. It's a nice quick one, this. Grab this out of the box. This is large format, it's A4, shiny paper. Front, front page then you've got some uh, history, you've got uh, Polish that side, English this side. A little bit of information there about the Mark II Hurricane. Sprue diagrams and decal sheet diagrams there. We do have some masks, included pre-cut masks for the canopy and the wheels and also I think probably the landing lights. Colour call outs are Hataka, AK Real Colour, Life Colour, Ammo, Humbrol, Vallejo and Tamiya. We also have FS numbers which are obviously not actually relevant because British aircraft use British standards not federal standards. Here are the said masks. There you go. Decals we'll look at in a minute. And we have an errata insert for step nine on the wings. Okay, so they've uh, identified a fit issue with the wings and this top one says for better fit remove the red marked part of the stringers from the inner side of the wing to allow those landing light inserts to fit properly that's nice and it also shows you here they've forgotten to tell you that if you're going to use a closed canopy you need to remove part of the canopy rail to allow it to fit properly <coughs> Right, on to the instructions themselves then. First things first, uh, not the cockpit, just for a change. Takes a sip of coffee. Um, we're starting with the wing. And if you want bombs, you need to drill some holes and it shows you where. Sorry, bombs or tanks. So you're going to need to be aware of whether you want to fit those right from the off, but that's not abnormal. Then put the spar together, build the rest of the wheelbase. It we end up with a complete completed wheel bay here, and then rather oddly, we're going to build the pilot seat. Okay. <laughs> uh. For painting options one or three, make a new hole in the new position which is coloured in red. Fill in the old hole which is coloured in blue. For painting option 2 remove the drop tank mounts here. Fit the wheel bays to the upper part of the wing and then put the wings together remembering to cut those little bits of spar out as mentioned. And then we build the cockpit straight onto the top of the wing. It's like the real thing really probably. The centre section is probably part of the fuselage when it's all put together. As I say, I'm not a hurricane spurt. Putting some struts there into the wheel bay. Instrument panel and various controls go into the actual fuselage house themselves and then that is joined. And then that lock goes onto the wing. Once that's together we've got radiator bath going up, going up, going in and the belly plate which is the one with the angled cutaway. I feel like the straight the straight ones for earlier I reckon I think. Not sure. A couple of tail tail wheel variants as the wheels colouring information. Undercarriage legs. I think the 
these are gun cameras I'm not sure let me know in the comments if you are but for painting up for it tells you which pieces to use for which painting option so marking option one is flush marking option two uses a67 and marking option three uses a66 so the gun sight going in then we choose our cannons and intake instructions there in a the red box about an antenna for the under surface shows you where to drill a hole and what to make it with 8mm long at 0.7mm it's only marking option 3 that uses the different cannon barrel I'm going to sneeze Excuse me. And propeller. So spinner options. It tells you there exactly what to use. It tells you to remove the stub on the aerial for all versions. Canopy bombs, tanks, etc. And then we're on to colouring it in. So we get three marking options in this kit. The first one. Bravo Echo 581. Number one squadron. RF Tangmere. And a Polish pilot, Flight Lieutenant Carol Krittelwasser. I'm not a huge fan of the overall black scheme, I'm not going to lie. Wouldn't be my first choice. Well, I wouldn't choose it at all, to be absolutely honest, but here it is. It does have a couple of slightly interesting tweaks, though, in that the trim tabs are still in the day fighter colours, as you can see on the rudder and the elevators. Uh, and of course, I've got a little fin cap which is still in the day fighter colours as well and you do have red codes and a red spinner so there's some there's something there but these were painted I, th I believe in special night so they did get absolutely horrible very very quickly because that paint didn't wear very well faded and filthy second one this is 257 squadron at RAF Coltishaw squadron leader Robert Stanford Tuck Z3152 FMA standard day fighter scheme dark earth dark green over sky with sky blue band and spinner maybe the third one and if I was going to stick with the kit decals this is the one or the kit marking options this is the one I would do this is 309 Squadron from RAF Drem, another Polish one. And this is the later day fighter scheme, so it's uh, dark green and ocean grey over medium sea grey. And it does have this curious weathering indicated. Now, if you go onto the Armour website, or if you just do a Google search, you'll find a picture of this aircraft, which shows this these curious light patches. I've looked at the photograph and honestly I I think that might be photo retouching and not weathering. The aircraft is quite heavily weathered to be fair, but I do not think that these light patches are weathering. I think I think they're probably photo retouching. But your model your choice. So there you go. Three color options all relatively standard. Just as an interesting aside maybe. My favourite scheme on the Hurricane 2, by a mile, is this one. The Night Intruder with the Black Belly. Um, I think potentially influenced by early Matchbox box arts when I was a kid, maybe. But this, I think, is the same aircraft as this, same serial number as this, same codes. And in the notes it states um, that these were overpainted from the night. It tells, yeah, it's got the same pilots. Here it is in all black. And here it is with the camouflage applied. Um, and in the notes on these it says they were repainted from the special night and the subsequent finish was scruffy and patchy. I'll see if I can't find some pictures of the real thing and maybe add one at the back of the video. But 
As a result of this, it means I can do my favourite scheme and not even have to buy a decal sheet because the kit decals, <laughs> they're right. I just have to paint around them differently. Um, yeah, just on the side. This is um, an extra decal sheet in 70 second scale, but I'm pretty sure that this sheet will be available in 48th. And there are, there is a plethora of schemes on here. There's black with yellow, black with red, night intruder, day fighter. This is a, an early day scheme with the, the mixed grey. More night intruders, bunch of different desert schemes, more desert schemes and then to finish uh, three SEAC schemes and those would be my second choice on a hurricane. Night Intruder followed by Seat. They just look so cool with those different roundels, I think. But I do have a Hasagawa Hurricane in one of these schemes already. So anyway, pick that up from Hannah's if you fancy it for this kit. I do not doubt that there will be a multitude of reissues of this kit coming from Armour Hobby with all sorts of different schemes and options. Anyway, but I wanted to get one straight away because I was excited about it. to the decals themselves then. So, reasonably simple sheet, I suppose as befits the subject. Printed by Tech Mod. Tech Mod, Tech Mod are perfectly decent. They're very, very glossy. Nice, tight carrier film um, around each one. You do have a decal harness there, whether you think that's a good thing or not. and stencil detail there's not that many stencils on aircraft of this period and certainly with a lot of the schemes i've just been talking about a lot of them would be over painted anyway uh, usefully we do have an instrument panel which is nicely done it's not overly bright and colorful like a lot of them are it looks quite prototypical and honestly Given a nice decal like that and a beautifully moulded instrument panel, I think a photo etched instrument panel would probably be over egging the pudding on this one, although a photo etched harness would be good. And again, there might well be a reissues of this kit that do include photo etch over time. There's a compass there as well, and also a side panel decal, cockpit area. Overall it looks competent, looks nicely done. Shouldn't be any real issues with application there, I don't think. So there we have it. A beautiful new kit from Armour. Very much uh, looked forward to by myself and no doubt many others. They do seem to be going out the door pretty quick. Uh, in the UK, this kit's going to set you back around about £40. So not super cheap um, but it shouldn't be it's 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 brand new tool it's let's get this in an aesthetically pleasant orientation <laughs> it's brand new it's a brand new toolkit it's it's right up there with everything it, it looks beautiful um, it, it looks well detailed it looks accurate well researched it really does look the part, dare I say. In terms of other kits, the only one worth talking about in this scale is the Hasegawa kit. You won't really get that for much less than £40, I wouldn't think, anyway. And the surface detail and detail generally on that, that doesn't hold a candle to this. It's nowhere near. Absolutely nowhere near. The only other good Hurricane kit in 48 scale is the Airfix one, which is very, very good, but it's not a Mark II, so it's not relevant. And again, were that reissued now today, it would probably be £30 plus itself. So I think the price is what it is. The, this is this is what these this is what kits are starting to cost now. Um, however, in a world where you can still buy Edward 48th kits for less than £30, I think some are going to chafe at 40 for something like this. As the old phrase goes, you pay your money, you take your choice. I think it looks stunning. 
I'm happy with the price for what you get in the box and I like the look of it so much that I do think I might well drop everything and do a very quick out of the box build on this very very soon and do please leave a comment if you'd like to see that and encourage me to do so <laughs> in the meantime I'll thank Andy Hills for holding this to one side for me and let me have it uh, again antics great online store and if you're ever around the Bristol area drop in and see Andy and say hi thanks as always to all my supporters on buy me a coffee I do really really appreciate the support you guys give me and if anybody wants to support the channel directly in that manner the link is below I uh, don't feel you need to though it certainly isn't mandatory and with all of that said it only remains for me to say look after yourselves look after each other Genesis out